a senior at Bennett College for Women from Durham, North Carolina. Here I study journalism and media studies and I am also a global studies minor. To be a global studies minor, I chose to study abroad in San Jose, Costa Rica. The reason why I chose San Jose, Costa Rica was because I wanted to learn the Spanish language and also I heard that Costa Rica was one of the happiest places in the world. So hearing that, I was really psyched and I told my family and friends about it. They supported me wholeheartedly. So I went towards uh, GoFundMe.com to raise money and after I raised the money, I packed up my stuff, said goodbye to my beautiful family and my wonderful friends and I went forth towards my new journey. ¿Qué significa pura vida, por favor? Costa Rica significa un pura vida, un país que somos muy felices. Somos calificados por, en todo el mundo porque somos un país de muy buenas costumbres. Acogemos mucho a todos los eh, extranjeros. Tenemos muchas cosas muy bonitas como playas y muchos lugares con muy linda vegetación, muy 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 bonito lo consideramos nosotros y tenemos costumbres creemos que muy buenas no tenemos ejército somos un entre lo que cabe un país muy tranquilo vivimos una vida muy tranquila Costa Rica, head of the province of San Jose and the nation's largest city. San Jose was founded in 1738 at the beginning of the westward expansion from Cartago, with independence from Spain in 1821. During colonial times, the main industry of the region was tobacco raising, but it didn't take long for the city to become the center of a coffee producing area, and it currently serves as the nation's distribution point for imports. According to the United Nations, Costa Rica has an estimated population of 4,579,000 people. Together, whites and mestizos make up a 94% of the population. 3% are black people, 1% Amerindies, 1% Chinese, and 1% other. Just under 3% of the population is of African descent, who are called Afro-Costa Ricans, or West Indians, and are English-speaking descendants of the 19th century black Jamaican immigrant workers. The Ticos are very relaxed, they're very chill, they're very nice. And um, while I was there, I really got close to my Tico grandmom who lived in the house with us and ate breakfast with you, so you had no choice but to get close to this wonderful lady. And I think um, at one point we had a conversation and I told her that the reason why I felt I was clinging to her was because my grandmom in the States was really, really sick. And so when I, when I said goodbye to my grandmom in the States before I studied abroad, we knew that there was a huge chance that they, that, that might be my last goodbye. And so I clung to my grandmom in Costa Rica because it felt like I had a piece of her. And so my grandmom in Costa Rica, my Tico grandmom, understood that. And so we had a really, really close bond. And to God be the glory, I was able to... Um, make it back to the States and be with my grandma for the few months that she had left and she did pass on May 19th.
Hot springs to volcanoes, mountains, monkeys, and even sharing my living quarters with lizards. Yes, lizards. Costa Rica proved to show me a new way of life. The Pura Vida lifestyle is one everyone should experience. Costa Rican food is very delicious and very healthy compared to what I'm used to. They blended, squeezed, and made most of their juices. The juices were so delicious and the fruit intake truly helped me as I began my weight loss journey. I ate lots of beans and rice, as you could have guessed, salads, tamales, spaghetti, beef stew, and lots of new fruit such as kas, guayaba, passion fruit, and dragon fruit. My Tico family had a bakery business, which resulted in me trying new foods and seeing how they are made. During my four months there, my family never ordered out. All the food was bought at a local market and prepared fresh for every meal of the day. The families in Costa Rica are keen on eating together. The idea of bonding is very important to the Ticos. One lesson I learned while studying abroad was that you have to have a support team wherever you are. And so traveling alone, not knowing any person, not knowing anything about my surroundings, I found that team of people that I knew I could depend on, that could help me learn the language, that would bond with me, and that would have an everlasting friendship. And it's crazy because all the people that I clung to and we built this sisterhood of brotherhood, we're still friends today. And so... I would really, really encourage people to get out and learn more about other schools, other colleges, other programs so that you're able to meet these people when you're networking in other countries, in other states, in other cities, anywhere. And so um, I really think it helped my study abroad experience being able to bond with people that I actually trusted while I was there. <laughs> There were times where I was picked on or a smart comment was made, but I believe that it made me a stronger person and it taught me how to react to people who were pretty much ignorant or just oblivious to what black culture or black women are. Um, while I was there, I had my hair in braids and as you can see in the video, my Tico grandma had no idea why I was asking for scissors and thought I was crazy when I cut my braids off. And I had to explain to her, they're extensions, they're extensions. And that's when she goes, oh, that's different. So when I pulled out my afro, uh, of course I got mixed reactions from it. Some people were just like, yes, that looks so cool. Oh, I love it. Some people of different races said, can my hair do that? While other people did point and they did laugh. But I felt that... I was com comfortable in myself, um, in my skin, and I knew that it's my hair and I'd rather flaunt what I have than pretend to be someone that I'm not. Spanish was really, really hard for me. And I think I struggled so much because I was used to, I've always been used to picking up stuff really fast and saying, oh, I've got that, I've got that. But to know, like, I wasn't able to process something mentally and then, like, conjugate and do this and do, it hurt. And so, um, I, my, my family challenged me at home. They'd ask me, how do you say fork? How do you say cap? And how do you say sink? How do you say water? All that stuff. And, um, it, it did, it did help. 
but I think one thing that hindered me from my Spanish um, learning experience was that sometimes we as Americans can travel to other places and feel like, oh, I don't have to learn this language. I'm, I'm from America and, and we speak English, so whatever. They can do whatever they want to in this country, but I don't have to learn it. It's not necessary. If anything, they need to learn English. And even though I didn't think I had that mindset, it took me up until about the middle of October so that's maybe like six weeks that I was in for me to say like Raquel get over yourself like try to learn this language stop being so ignorant and as in all places poverty was out in the open adults did what they could to make ends meet but they were not the only ones Children suffered too. While traveling to Nicaragua, the second poorest country in Latin America, my friends and I saw the struggle firsthand. Talented boys would make objects out of leaves in exchange for money and would beg for food from tourists. Innocent children as young as two were homeless. Seeing them suffer broke my heart. Our mission and purpose is so much bigger. And seeing these children was my wake-up call. I think it gave me a lot of time to sit back and look at my life here in the U.S., my life in Costa Rica, my life in the future, my life in the past, and, and it was just kind of like, it made me question, am I living to my full potential? One thing about studying abroad is that you really have to know yourself. You really have to know who you are and who you are, what you're going to stand for, what you will and will not do, and also who you want to be when you leave here. Pura vida. Pura vida. <laughs> Somos felices. Gracias a Dios.